everybody. We are live. No, I'm not live oh. anymore. I uh, love, uh, we have. <laughs> I'm playing our stupid intro, and <laughs> I'm I'm fully aware that we have like an iconic professional writer in the green room also watching our stupid intro, and I feel nothing but shame as I see these stupid images just like run across the screen. So yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, <laughs> I'll, cool. maybe I'll change it. <laughs> the world is cool, um, but, but also the famous. Doing? Spider pig running across the screen. Pig. Exactly. So this is going to be a fun, this is going to be a really fun episode because I, I famously, and this is a huge joke amongst my friends, but like I wasn't allowed watching Simpsons growing up. So I, Cause, I know cause y'all were the Christians, right? Yeah, we were the Christians. My parents, my parents just yeah. thought it was like, I think they taught, I don't know if they thought it was vile, but I think it was like too, it was too smart and chippy. Yeah. And I think they were afraid I was going to grow up to be like a sarcastic dickhead if I like watched it, <laughs> which happened anyway. So which happened really anyway. Nice. They yeah. they could but, have they could have stopped nature. Oh yeah, my god! They couldn't stop it. But um, anyway, so this is Did You Reddit, a weekly podcast about the internet by way of Reddit, the front page of the internet. My name is It's Your Dad. I'm Dog Boobs. Hi, my free day. Recording uh, not from then, the studio. Not from the studio. Where are you right now? I'm in my childhood home in uh, Northern wow. California because we're on fourth Scott, four year four year old spring break. Cool. Oh my god, that's you, the you, wildest! You back into your your childhood home. Yeah, no, well, we're on we've gone that downhill. <laughs> we're on spring break. We're uh, yeah. we're, vis- we're visiting family. Yeah, Northern uh, California kindergarten spring break is it like COVID nightmare up there? People just completely partying, maskless. Uh, there's no, it feels like the safest place in the world to be for COVID. Everyone's miles apart in the woods the and nobody's here and everyone's in Gore-Tex, which, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure <laughs> cures COVID. <laughs> it cures it. <laughs> That's so funny. Fleece and Gore-Tex definitely work against COVID. Pretty sure you're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So as, as we've alluded to a few times now, so, so this week we have a very special guest, um, it was also part of the Believe Network um, and is, I believe, I actually, you know, I'll, I'm going to just pull him into the stream right now and then I'll let him give us his like full statistical breakdown. Um, but Or we could butcher his life story. Or we could but... butcher it. Mike Reese. <laughs> here I am. Uh, nice to be welcome. here. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I know. Hey, I love you. So Mike is the um, longest tenured Simpsons writer of ever in the history of the show is that what i know it's funny i i i've been saying it i didn't coin it and then al Jean, who's now my boss he was my writing partner for years he said he's been there like two weeks longer so (laughs) he objects to that so yes i am the second by two weeks it's like the simpsons for years would brag oh we're the longest running show on tv and I think we came on, I think Law and Order came on two weeks later, something like that. So we always had this record. Nobody knew that Law and Order would have had it except by like two weeks. Dick Wolf, <laughs> he screwed up. <laughs> I think neither Dick Wolf nor your boss are here to defend themselves. So as far as we're concerned, you are you are the winner. Yes, the these are both the these men are just crying their eyes out on their gold yacht. <laughs> They're watching right now. Yeah, I mean, quite frankly, we don't know if they are or aren't watching this stream right now. So there's a, a real possibility Dick Wolf is watching right now. <laughs> He's on every week. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, well, welcome, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us. We've um, we we've been very excited to have you on. I know that uh, I so uh, Free Day is a writer in in LA. I'm I'm a writer in like less interesting terms, but but everybody we the world of The Simpsons I think has defined comedy for generations now. I think it literally is safe to say at least two generations. Wow. So so I, I think it's it's really interesting being able to talk to you about this stuff. And I think with the, through the lens of Reddit, which is obviously what our podcast is all about, we you know we there's a world of obviously the the Simpsons subreddit itself. But I think what what has been really interesting the last few years has been all of these predictions oh, that Simpsons has, have made. You had right. to lead with that, okay? I had sure, to lead with that. And and but I think it's I think it's a testament to your writing. I mean, I think this is what what I think is so interesting about that topic is it is like speaks to the brilliance in the same way that like Mike Judge, you watch a Mike Judge, you watch Idiocracy or something, and you're just like, man, that guy really knew what was going to happen. Yeah. And I think you would ask Mike Judge, and he'd be like, "No, I didn't know it was going to happen. I just like looked at what was happening, 
And I thought, wouldn't it be crazy if this happened? And then it did, right? Yeah. And and I, and I I have, a, I have a feeling it's probably similar to The Simpsons, but I but you know it's nice being able to talk to you about it because I think you can talk to some of these specific instances of that and the show's inception. Yeah, the, it's a great great topic, and it just gets bigger and bigger. And uh, the hard part is only nobody has come up with sort of here's our glib quick answer to that and you don't want to be too much of a jerk it's been great for the show in that i think a lot of people younger people are just watching the show like it's a psychic prediction show what will happen (laughs) next? they don't know it's a comedy they don't know it's a cartoon they're just looking for click you know it's we're like QAnon. They're just sort of right (laughs) okay what what little pearl of info will they drop us next so it's good for the show but on the other hand you know the sims is very cynical kind of place and this is just the kind of thing that makes you think people are idiots (laughs) (laughs) well it's it's cynicism built on it's cynicism built on an intelligent way of writing i think i mean i was watching some last night because i was obviously coming into this and my girlfriend was watching something else i was like you know what like let's watch some simpsons because i like i you know like i've said in the beginning the preamble of the show it's like i wasn't allowed watching simpsons as a kid so like yeah. my Get friends are constantly making... you've said that three times you're That's a man. i know yeah. i know i don't know it still feels weird they're terrible they're just, they parents. don't let me i know <laughs> It's very, it's very, uh, I, I, I can't get over this. I, I go to therapy about it now is, is the, <laughs> the thumb by which I function under my parents. That's um, your, that's your was, victimization card you like to play. It is, it is yeah. my victimization card. Well, as a man growing up who never was allowed to watch The Simpsons, uh, <laughs> and then you lead into it. Exactly. Exactly. They're listening to you right now. Yeah. They grew up without shoes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? They, yeah, they, I mean, it's, it's not an American luxury. It's an American necessity. They couldn't afford a vaccine. But yeah, <laughs> we'll go on. Um, so, so I was watching it last night, and I was like, I, I you know, I, I don't want to say I was stunned at how sharp it was, but I was amazed at how much I was laughing out loud. And I was doing the kind of laughter that I like, which I was just kind of going, <laughs> And then I would just like kind of go back to like half paying attention and then something would catch my ear and I'd be like, <laughs> and then I would just go back to having attention, which I think is like for me as a mark of, of really good writing is because it's just like it's something that catches and then moves on. And so, <laughs> um, but yeah, so so why don't we um, and I also, by the way, I also want to talk about some of your travel experiences because just just because we do want to plug you have a podcast as well. I have a podcast. And, yeah. You have a podcast and it's all it's all hilarious. Well, I don't know if it's all hilarious. At least the one episode I listened to this morning was it's a hilarious, hilarious. <laughs> story, a, a hilarious story of you traveling um, through Nepal. And it's just seemingly just these these stories that you write about your travels. Right. That's it. Yeah, I have. a, And it'll, it, when we talk about it, it all does tie into The Simpsons somehow. So people. We're not. We won't shift gears radically, but very quickly, just to set it up, is the idea that when I'm not working at The Simpsons, I travel, and I've been to 134 countries, and I go to the places nobody wants to go, like Iran and Syria and Libya, and I've been to. I was in. I've been to the North Pole and stuff like so, and I can tell it funny. That's why you should. It's not boring. So I was listening to the episode about Costa Rica and uh-huh. describing the sloth in the trees. I can't think of a better description than a big furry pair of tree testicles from like <laughs> 40 yards away. Like, how are you supposed to tell what that is? Like, it's just... I love it. I I haven't traveled a whole lot and like listening to the episodes that have come out, I already know I'm like really pumped to listen to the episodes for like Iran, the North Pole, like you said, like the really, really crazy places. And the, the other thing Simpson-y about it, and then we'll get back to Simpson, is just the idea. I'm sort of telling you the truth that nobody tells you about travel. Yeah, right. And some of it's very happy surprises, like that Iran is one of the nicest places in the world. I can't wait to go back there. But like uh, tomorrow, what we'll launch tomorrow is an episode about the Northern Lights. I went to Iceland in the dead of winter to see the Northern Lights, and the Northern Lights suck. Wait, they, what? They suck. <laughs> it didn't change your life? It, what? And you've all, you know, no. I mean, it's sort of this 
kind of massive <laughs> lie that's been going on. Because here's the weird thing. And again, we'll get back to some. <laughs> the Northern Lights photograph beautifully. And it, they look great on camera. And they look like crap in person. They just look like <laughs> smoke coming out of an ashtray. And, Amazing. And, and that's it. So, you know, it looks good in pictures. So you see it in a magazine. You got to go. And then you go there and you're, you feel like an idiot. But then you take these great pictures. You show your friends. Nobody, nobody in the history of the Northern Lights has had the courage to say, these suck. <laughs> Don't go. Finally, you're able to like stop the big Iceland tourism conglomerate <laughs> from continually perpetuating these trips. Let's yeah, just cut the bullshit. It's, it's funny not about that great. The travel shows, like as you're talking about it, there aren't that many, or I've, there's zero travel shows that I can think of that are at all humorous. They're all so self-important about the majesty of whatever they're looking Very at. True. And I've been to a handful of countries, nowhere near as many as you, but you go to a lot of these places and you're like, this is kind of crappy. Like there's electrical wires. My eyes are burning from smog. Like, yep. uh, I, you know, it's like hot or whatever, you know, whatever the thing is, but, but nobody wants to talk about it because they just dropped 10 grand and they don't exactly. want to come home and say, that it that it wasn't that great. <laughs> everybody loves their vacation. I guess that's episode two. That was Costa Rica, where everybody tells you to go to Costa Rica, and at least yeah. it may be great fifty-one weeks a year. And I went the bad week, but <laughs> Jesus Christ, what a terrible time I had there! And I, I, I drizzled at the end. That like, well, you spent a lot of money on a vacation. You don't want to feel like an idiot. So you tell people you had a great time, but <laughs> wow, I had a bad time there. So, okay. Simpsons, That's what good. did they predict? They predicted I would have a terrible vacation. <laughs> they predicted your terrible vacation. End of episode. There we yeah. go. Thank you. There we go. It all ties up in a yeah. bow. It all ties up. I mean, it's so like our Christopher format, Nolan way, put well. this together. Yeah. We, we do not have, we do this often where we will be like, we're going to talk about this. And then, like, an hour and a half later, we're like, "Oh fuck, we need to talk about that thing." So it's not a big deal if we if we can we can talk about whatever. And you know, I think talking about travel is really interesting through your lens too, because you know, at the end of the day, you, you have been to some crazy places. So I would love to talk about travel more. And the more I was listening to that podcast this morning, which again, it's called "What Am I Doing Here?" Right? What am I doing here? Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. And so podcast called "What Am I Doing Here?" Also on the Believe Network, which we are a part of as well. So um, I think there are, you're three episodes in, right? We are three. Yeah, the number yeah, four drops. Four. Uh, and it's also tomorrow. the Fun format enough. is interesting too because it's not you talking. You have a hired gun who reads the stories, right? No, that's me. It's, oh, it is. I, you. Here, here, it's, it's somebody compared it to an audio book, which was nice. It is like an not, audio book. It's not, you know, just a bunch of people shooting the breeze. It's not that. You never hear a dog barking in the background, which is <laughs> nope. what you hear on every other podcast. I am Our, dog ours, included. ours included. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, although my wife is now grinding something, I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> She That's never, normal on our we've podcast. We've been married for 33 years. She never ground anything till this moment. <laughs> like, what so could possibly be grinding in there? <laughs> I like don't know. Pestle just like yeah. just yesterday. We're getting into spices, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. I think it's cinnamon. So, uh, now I forgot where I was going. Oh, the podcast. Yeah, you know, I, well, I'll, I'll tell it real quick, which is, so I work a day a week at the Simpsons and uh, because that's, that's all I'm good for at this point. <laughs> and I would come in, the, you know, every Wednesday and everyone said, what'd you do this week? And everyone said, oh, I watched second season of Fargo and I did the true detective sucked and blah, blah, blah. And they go, Mike, what did you do? And I go, I went to North Korea or, you know, <laughs> I got kidnapped in Honduras. I had better <laughs> stories. <laughs> And so wow. a guy at work said to me, this should be a podcast. This should just be you telling these stories. And he, he says, I know everyone in podcasting. He said, I got friends in Patreon, blah, blah, blah. So I said, all right, I'll do it. And, I, you know, I spent two grand on a big microphone. And <laughs> I, I got all the equipment. I scripted these podcasts. They're not off the cuff. I'm, I hope they sound kind of funny. It's like stand-up. Oh, yeah. It's very polished to sound natural. Um, 
I make the three podcasts. I send it to my friend who knows everybody in podcasting. I go, so who do you know? He goes, I don't know anybody. (laughs) (laughs) I was just trying to come across. That was it. He just wanted to look like a big shot. So luckily, (laughs) I had a friend from Believe, and uh, he hooked me up. Otherwise, I'd be I'd be so mad. Are you writing? (laughs) Are you writing the stories from memory or or journals or notes or I mean? It's it's almost all from memory. So you get cool. that kind of impressionistic. Yeah, nice. It's not research. It's not Rick Steve. It's like, and so it's a lot of talking about, here was a horrible hotel I was in. Here was yeah, a right. waiter that tried to punch me. It's just the things that really mm-hmm. stick in your head more than uh, the cultural it. surroundings. So and, it would be hard to replicate the trip one for one because the details might not be there. Of, no, of, I, I <laughs> even wonder, I go, Geez, how true are these stories? You know, <laughs> but they're Sorry. funny stories, cool. and uh, and uh, you know, I, I do. I'll go to Wikipedia. I could work much harder. You know, I, I <laughs> we have a hundred thousand photos uh, that I could be looking at, but I don't. I just sort of, you know, it, this is what stuck with me. And if it right. and it's got to be a funny story, or I won't tell it. It's like I've been to Spain five times. Nothing funny ever happened, so you're not going to hear about Spain. You know, get right. with it, Spain. <laughs> so, and the other, thing, so, and really quick, just the other thing about the production of the thing is, I knew nobody's going to want to hear this voice for 15 solid minutes. So a lot of the stories involve my wife saying, "Let's do this, let's do that." So I said, "All right, I'll get her in, and she'll play herself whenever she's got nice. dialogue." I love that. And then I said, you know what? But then uh, half the stories are me dealing with a tour guide in Africa or a waiter in South America or something like that. Right. I said, I need a voice actor. And then it hit me. There's a doorman in my building <laughs> who he saw me 15 years ago. He saw me on a Simpsons documentary and suddenly goes, I got to audition for this guy. So every friggin' day, this man has auditioned for me as I leave the building. <laughs> at the beginning of the day, he does a little shtick. I come home at night, he does a new character. 15 <laughs> years of auditioning. And so I said, I'm going to give him a break. I'll, <laughs> let, me use, Hell yeah. I, let me use him in the podcast. He's at least here, you know? He's yeah. in the building. So I bring him up, I give him, you know, he's playing 15 different roles. I put him in front of the microphone. And the guy's friggin' excellent. He's so talented. Wow. He's been able to do every character I've thrown at him, men and women. He had to be uh he had to be Werner Herzog last week. He had to be Werner Herzog <laughs> talking to a Sam? guy in the Ivory Coast. So he's, he's, he's <laughs> German and then African. And uh he he did that beautifully. He takes direction great. So he is you know, wow. of all the doormen in the building, he is by far the most talented, <laughs> That's most talented awesome. voice actor of all the doormen in the building. That, the yeah. Hank is area of doormen. He's, like. really, he's literally as good as, you know, maybe not as good as the Simpsons guys, but <laughs> any professional I've worked with, he's absolutely as good as those guys. Well, I, don't that's, I, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's good for. Character. Yeah, I don't know if it's a good sign for voice actors or a bad sign, but it is. I, you know, I feel terrible. My sister even took a voice acting course. Is everybody wants to break into voice acting because they go, of course, I have a voice, I can talk, <laughs> yeah. and, and I don't have a face. Is, if you're a good voice actor, you can do forty jobs a week. And in the early days of The Simpsons, before telephones, these guys were all on pagers, like drug runners, and they would run from one job to another. So literally you only need 30 people to do all the voice work that America can possibly come up with. So yeah. It's very hard to break into. It's like you don't need thousands of people to do voices. No, you in don't. The world. You just don't. No. So you do As I say, this you guy all. is good and you'll hear him <laughs> on every episode. Maybe that's where podcasting came from. Everyone who didn't have a job in voiceover became a podcaster. Yeah. <laughs> it's like making your own business, starting your own business, kind of. It's like shit. Yeah. No one will hire me, so yeah. <laughs> like make people now. listen to my voice. <laughs> I'm starting a bar. Yeah. yeah. Um, amazing the podcast. I said, all right. I need my famous friends to to help promote the thing. 
Right. And I don't have that many famous friends, but I sent it to Weird Al Yankovic. Here's yeah. my new podcast. He's got five uh, he's million the followers. Favorite person. Yeah. 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 He's the greatest. <laughs> Al just he just wrote back to me. He said, "You know, Mike, I was just sitting here thinking the world needs more podcasts." <laughs> oh, I love him. He's a little dark, cynical edge from he Al. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely great guy. That really made me laugh. Oh, so good. Yeah. That's amazing. amazing. Well, we'll be. We'll cool. have to get him on ours then, because <laughs> he sounds like he loves podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> um, he is like he's like Reddit's like favorite person though. There's a, there are a few people on in the world I think that receive universal acclaim, yeah. and I think it's like Weird Al, Jack Black. Maybe Steve Austin, the wrestler. Okay. I think that's like the only ones I can think of. So like, weird else? Al, he is one of the greatest guys in the world. And, you know, yeah, anyone who objective. even digs a little deeply, a little deep into his past, sees, oh, he's brilliant. You know, he graduated high yeah. school at 16 and he was the valedictorian. He's, he's not at all weird. He's, uh, <laughs> but just tremendously nice guy. I thought you were going to drop a big bomb about Weird Al's uh, back backstory, his past, right there. No, no, yeah. nothing. If you dig deeper, you'll find out Weird Al. And that was what I just went out. He's a Q and one, honor. <laughs> we went out one day for lunch, and you know uh, it was on Hollywood Boulevard, and they stuck us right in the window, and Amazing. you could see, you know, everybody going by, and I re I would see people looking in, and I realized. Everyone in the world knows Weird Al. It's like your parents know who he is, and oh, your five-year-old kid knows who he is. He's he's literally more famous than Mick Jagger. My dad wouldn't recognize Mick Jagger, but he knew who Weird Al was. That's you know that's actually an interesting accidental segue into The Simpsons because I think I feel like that is really the story of The Simpsons too, in a way, which I think is what makes it so powerful. It's yeah. become this thing. Well, it's not even become this thing. I mean, it's been this thing for a long time. But I think that you know, you've obviously seen the Homer backing into the backing into the shrubs, mm -hmm. the gif always happening and the meme. And like, I think that the language now of of you know contemporary media consumption and sharing, obviously with like the younger, you know, much younger than us, is all through the the memification of media. And like that is probably one. I think that's probably one of the most om omnipresent memes on the internet is Homer backing into a, the the bushes. So yeah. that itself i think is is a testament to like how the longevity of that show so anyway all right so let's talk a little bit about the simpsons and we'll probably talk more about travel but okay if we um, got to what two favorite topics? I'm, I'm, okay, I'm okay with it yeah so <laughs> and the simpsons so first travel all, they go somewhere the every travel. year <laughs> so so um free day and dog dog do you do you did you guys grow up watching the simpsons well um let me tell you a little bit about my simpsons journey my <laughs> my evil cousin <laughs> And who is not evil anymore, by the way. Uh, just, Mike, to give you a little background on my cousin, I, I recently uncovered a deck I made, a presentation I made about my early childhood trauma, like last year. I guess it was when I was unemployed. And I have an entire slide devoted to my cousin who was a bit of a bully growing up. But he introduced me to The Simpsons because he always had a bit of an edgier taste than us when we were really little. And we were like, my mom was very overprotective. So my cousin was the one who was like, you guys want to watch The Simpsons? <laughs> so I always felt like I was kind of breaking the rules when I was. So I guess we were, it's your dad and I were kind of both overly sheltered Christian kids. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> overly sheltered Christian kids. Overly sheltered uh, Christian kids. But it's been a real like, um, uh renaissance as i've gotten older because i'm like tr i'm trying to watch them all now but it's it's not as familiar with me as it is with eric jr i'll say <laughs> that kid was bad my cousin, my cousin yeah he smoked oregano he also. smoked oregano he sold oregano he used one of those like cool hand buzzer like pranks all the time he was very cool watch out for <laughs> cool. that's a cool that's a cool gesture he was a cool guy. what about you Fred? yeah i i yeah, I was like a young boy and within my family, uh, I was the young one on the younger side. So everyone else has uh, had already been watching the Simpsons. So I think I sort of got into it by proxy of just knowing they think it's cool and then sort of got into it that way. But it was, nobody was paying attention to me as a kid. I, <laughs> I, uh, I like, my dad is like a junk collector. He had like extra TVs in his garage. 
I like stole one, put it in my bedroom, ran cable like out the side of the house, plopped it into the side. I had to take a TV going in my room when I was like a little kid. They didn't know about it for like two or three years. Wow. Yeah, it was like one of those. Yeah, it was just, parenting. it was chaos, chaos at my house. Yeah. Yeah. They, they probably that. given up by that point. So uh, <laughs> love. <laughs> and then I, I can remember just not understanding a lot of the Simpsons jokes that were over my head when I was a kid because my older cousins and brothers and stuff thought it was so, so funny. And I remember faking a lot of like, oh, yeah, that is funny. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know why. Cause I'm dumb, <laughs> but I definitely was attracted to like just Bart Simpson. Cause he was a boy with a skateboard initially. That was like, I'm in, where do I sign up? So I think a lot of people, when you're a kid, I think that was kind of the attraction. And I think that might've yeah. been part of why my parents were like, no, no bueno, the Simpsons. They were just like, Bart, he's a bad kid. I don't want you to yeah. be a bad kid like Bart. Yeah. Wow. No, so, on the other I hand, Lisa was like the original feminist and she was That's such true. an icon for like <laughs> little girls who wanted to learn the saxophone. So yeah. Greta, like ripped, Greta ripped her off 100%, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Simpsons Greta Simpson totally ripped off Lisa Simpson's entire Ugh. personality. <laughs> I'm like, two of you guys were kind of raised Christian and repressed, and one guy has grown up in a house full of chaos, and you all wound up in exactly the same place. Look at us all here right it now. It just shows you parenting yeah. doesn't count for right. anything. We all, exactly. we all ended up in our childhood bedroom today. <laughs> I, so I, I had an episode on last night of I was I too was watching Simpsons episodes, like early episodes to catch up. And my four year old, I have a four year old boy who loves skateboarding and he's gotten recently into uh, Guns N' Roses. He is Bart. He he kind of looks like Bart. The, I love that he's into Guns N' Roses. So he loves Guns N' Roses. He sings. I, he just likes the rhythm. He likes that fast rhythm, you know. Yeah. But he's he's. I think it was the first time he saw The Simpsons was last night, and I, just because I had it on, and he's like, he just starts laughing at Bart doing Bart stuff, and it he doesn't know really what he's saying, but he just he sees the kid on a skateboard, goofing around. Uh, being a while, and he's like, oh, oh yeah, I like this guy. He like he's like, I like this cartoon. He's like, what is this? And I'm like, wow. So it's you know, he's in now. He's like been indoctrinated. Oh my god! Oh, I love it. That's great. Yeah. I mean, so, it's always been a secret of the show because they're always telling what's the secret. But yeah, one is just it has this giant audience, none of whom are watching it for the same reason. It's families mm -hmm. can Very watch true. it together. And they're all getting something completely different out of it. So, you know, I mean, it'd be very, nice to be something like Christianity. Everybody's going there for the same reason. But, you know, <laughs> us, we've got a million different small audiences. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it, is, it is a great point. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Dad. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting, too, thinking about it through the lens of, you know, I mean, it, it's it's uh, so many other shows now, I think, have in some capacity copied the formula or, or are like not rip offs, of, but like, you know, Family Guy. I think the, 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 the same character development is based on the same idea. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I think I think South Park is a little different because South Park is kind of its own weird formula and its own weird kind of genius. But but I think some of the more popular shows, even Rick and Morty, I think one would say has a little bit of the same nucleus. Right. Which is like you have a young, innocent thing and then you have the kind of old wizened weirdo. And then like watching those two things kind of collide in the same way that you see different aspects of the dynamics of The Simpsons collide. I think it's just it goes again. It, I don't I don't know what you guys base the original concept of The Simpsons on in terms of character development, but it seems like so many things have been derived from it since, right? That yeah, it, it really yeah it shows that secret sauce, you know. Well, I cheated, Mike, and I've been listening to your book on Audible, so uh -huh. I know the an I know the answer to that, Dad. But I'll let Mike maybe. <laughs> oh, what did I say? I mean, because. It may not be the answer I give now. Oh, you! I think you were just describing the Matt Groin, Groin's, you know, uh, pitch story of where the characters maybe came from and how they he de developed them in eight seconds or something. That's exactly uh, true. That is, that is, <laughs> I've been telling that story for so long, and then it was just <laughs> recently I heard James L. Brooks on a podcast. You know, the man never talks to me in person, but I had to listen to a podcast where. He told the same story, which is Matt Groening had come in for a meeting at the Tracy Ullman show, and it was five minutes before the meeting. Somebody said, oh, we're excited to hear about your new project, and he had no new project. So in five minutes, he just sat there and invented The Simpsons, and I, I think the fans must know by now, but what a lot of people don't know is he invented it in five minutes, and how did he do that so fast? Well... 
Matt Groening's parents are named Homer and Marge, and he's got sisters named Lisa and Maggie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. It is unbelievable. So think, you know, if he had put like half an hour into it, how good it would be. <laughs> I, mean, I was it's, I, it's, I related so to that. Bad. I was I was related to that tidbit of information because I I work in TV. I develop and pitch and it's like sell TV shows, and so I I've been in a hundred meetings where they go, "This is just a general conversation. Right. Don't bring anything. They don't. They're not gonna. It's not a pitch. You don't need to be prepared." And then you walk in, they go, "What are you gonna pitch us today?" And you kind of go, "Oh shit." I was told by everybody who wear suits, <laughs> who, who drive nice cars, that this is just a conversation. And then on the fly, you start improving a joke, and it's more times than not like they like that thing mm -hmm. than the thing you spent six months developing. And it's, it's you know, I don't know what that is, but it happens all the time. Like, so I, I was relating to that story. Not that I've ever created or sold The Simpsons, but I'm a little bit. Sure you know, because you, you can go, <laughs> Simpsons, it was created in five minutes. To be a one-minute show, you know, it's the right again. People know who are listening that it started off as these one-minute cartoons on the Tracy Ullman show, and I think a South Park the same way. That was just the okay. video greeting card. I was one of the guys got the VHS tape oh, in the mail. Oh, just the here's a VHS here's a card we made to to entertain our friends, and when I heard, oh, they're going to make a show out of it, I go, how? There's nothing there. But uh, they did it. I'm still Do saying that. I'm like, there's. I don't know if this show is going to succeed or not. There's nothing there. <laughs> keep saying that. But I mean, I, I no, you know, I'm I'm now relating. I, one of the things I love about The Simpsons is is we talked about earlier. But as as you you relate to the characters differently at different ages and or stages in your probably. life. Like now that I'm a dad, like I've always loved Homer, but really Homer's really becoming. Uh, a relatable character lately because as a parent you feel like you don't know what the hell you're doing you're screwing up all the time and and all the best you can do sometimes is just love your kids even though you're terrible at your job oh, and so, so homer point. really is 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 like uh you know he's a real beacon of hope for a dad like me who's uh figuring it out <laughs> so he's great yeah we all you know writing the show we would all especially when we're we were creating it just Homer was our dad. And it was really how we perceived our dad more than how they were. It's like Matt Groening's father, Homer Groening, was a, a documentary filmmaker and a surfer, you know? But he, to, to young Matt Groening, he just looked like Homer, just looked like big and loud and angry. And my father was a physician who wrote his three books as a hobby and it's like my dad was homer too and sam simon one of the other big creators of the show he always said but yeah my father was homer simpson it's like <laughs> your father your father was a jewish millionaire with one leg <laughs> how can he be homer? but it really that's i mean that's, 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 I, want, the, the, I want that homer perspective, dad <laughs> the perspective of the show's writing though i mean because you, you are writing it from the perspective of Bart or Lisa, I think, is kind of really the implication there is that that kind of the perception of your I mean, it reminds me of like Charlie Brown in a way where like the adults always speaking in gibberish on the phone. Right. Yeah. Where like that doesn't it doesn't matter what they're saying. It's just a perception of them being a super supervisor character. Right. And, you know, I also I mean, this is this is a different thing entirely. But, you know, talking about that, that one, the the kind of eight minute pitch or the eight second pitch or whatever i always i also always think about this with disney where you know mickey mouse is three circles right and yeah. they've turned it into this unbelievable entertainment empire based on the tiniest simplest drawing of a mouse right and so i think it, it's just a fascinating thing that you could you could you could turn something as simple as like a, a nuclear family into the the relatable kind of you know now three decades old kind of america's most important television show, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's very, very, very special. I think very special for a lot of reasons. But so I guess, I guess, getting into you know, and like I said, I mean, we're going to be kind of like talking in and around the Simpsons the whole time. But um, let's get to the the subreddit Simpsons did it. Okay. So I think I think Simpsons did it. So you know, this is uh, the whole the whole show today and kind of this episode. If you're either watching on the stream, thank you for everybody that's watching the stream, and then. And then uh, anybody who's just listening. So, you know, when we when we got in touch with Mike. 
uh, we were like, well, what what is an interesting Simpsons subreddit that you know we we don't aren't going to just talk about like r slash Simpsons. We want to talk about something that was a little bit meatier, and I think that what's interesting about the Simpsons did it thing is I think every couple months now, I feel like people have like cotton on to this idea that the Simpsons predicts things. Yeah. And so we're, we're constantly seeing these stories and there is a subreddit that kind of documents it in its most microcosmic form called Simpsons did it. But I also think that, you know, there's a, is it, what is this? <laughs> this was like the perfect meme I found that is a combination of the Simpsons and Mike's travel stories. I feel like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Amazing. It's, it's uh for anyone who's listening and not watching it's uh an image of homer in the amazon going on a uh amazon river cruise type of uh what's the word uh tour and the tour guide who looks suspiciously like josh gad if you ask me <laughs> says behold the amazon but quick because we're burning it down <laughs> <laughs> This was, I don't know what season this is, but assuming it's a prediction, this is probably well before we started destroying the Amazon in mass like we are now. Yeah. <laughs> I laugh heartily. Always <laughs> heartily. I know. Um, so this is actually an interesting, before we keep going, I know we are getting some questions from, from anybody who's streaming right now. I'm going to try to hit some of these at the end um, just so people know. I know, I know somebody asked, which I don't know if you are. Uh, authorized to say this, but I think it's actually a good question is how do you think it's changed since going to Disney? Um, oh. if you feel like if you feel like the the concept of the show has changed or if kind of they the integrity is has remained the same and and I think through the years in general, I think it's an interesting question. Do you want to pull up your political answer now, Mike? Or no, no, you... it's, it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy and glad that I can just say it's been great. Yeah. It's been how great. Is Walt and to you? Yeah. They've uh you know they they decided it's like you know when they bought us, they bought Family Guy too, but yeah, they don't right. tell anybody that. And I think uh, Family Guy's on Hulu, but we're you know a big selling point. We're the number one thing on Disney Plus, so right. they've given us this giant audience, and they appreciate it that this is something people are coming to Disney Plus for. And thank God, you know, if you're buying Disney Plus for your kid, there's something on it you can watch too. Mm -hmm. So Disney's been really great. They said two things. One, uh, they said no more smoking. They said don't show people smoking. Okay. And, you know, that's fine. It really knocks the character out of Patty and Selma. <laughs> Dude, that's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. What about vaping? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We did a vaping show already. It's typical of Simpsons, which is. We did vaping, you know, it was, it was like, <laughs> we did it. It was we like a story in, in one episode, like that, yeah. so we can't go near there. Right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> they just wear like 30 patches each. Someone. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> nicotine just, patches. Yeah. It's a little bit of a challenge. And mm -hmm. what's funny is it, it shows you how quickly perception changes my whole life. I've seen people smoking in movies and then mm -hmm. suddenly they got rid of it. And it's, it's, you know, overseas, you can't see it at all. And a Japanese movie in India, in an Indian movie, you'll be watching a movie and you'll see something kind of tiled out something or, or blurred <laughs> out and it's a cigarette. So you can still see boobs and stuff, but you yeah. can't see a cigarette. <laughs> and wow. you know, within a month of this policy coming in, I, tune in TV and I see someone smoking and I go, Ooh, that's bad. So <laughs> it just shows you, you know, you can change people's tastes yeah. pretty mm -hmm. easily. And you I will it. say, yeah, it, yeah. it, I, like I said, my, my four year olds get into Guns N' Roses, so I'll let them watch some YouTube videos of Guns <laughs> yeah, N' Roses. Every time you say yeah. that, it will never not make me laugh. My four and it's getting into Guns and Roses. But everybody in 1989 on the Sunset Strip is smoking 40 cigarettes at once. And, and, <laughs> and, and, he's always, and he's like, What are those things in their mouths? And I'm like, wow. oh, sh I'm like, Oh shit. Uh, lollipops. Those <laughs> are lollipops. Yeah. And so, and then he would like put the something in his mouth. Fun. Don't. <laughs> And he, they're they're all smoking yeah. penises. <laughs> uh, but he like put something. He like rolled up a piece of paper and was like, and I'm ah, like, and so he was mimicking it. So I'm like, oh, this is you know, this is a real thing. See, this yeah. is factually true. Yeah. Like it is cool looking. 
It is. Yeah. Oh, he thinks it's the coolest. <laughs> yeah. That is yeah. objective. That's an objective reality. It actually it does is. look cool. Yeah. It's the one thing that we haven't been able to conquer. It just yeah. is cooler. I mean, we are we are a definitively pro cigarette podcast, I would say. <laughs> oh, yeah. By the way, let's let's get to our first sponsor, Philip Morris. Philip Morris, <laughs> friend of the pod. Laramie Cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, okay, so anyway, so, so I guess that, back that's to that's what Disney has done to us. No smoking. Yeah, okay, and great. the other thing, we have a trick where we do, you know, we do all these musical numbers on the show, and right. uh, traditionally we would take an existing song and instead of paying for it, we would change two notes, and then it was like, right. now it's our song. <laughs> and Disney said, "Don't do that anymore." <laughs> and it's like, you know, good for you. I mean, we're yeah. Here's the Simpsons. We're always fighting the bootlegs, and then here we are bootlegging songs by <laughs> Stephen Sondheim. So right. that's the, that's and literally that's the only thing Disney has said to us. That's and, good. Uh, well, luck, think, luckily, like, luckily, you have uh, Weird Al on your corner because I think yeah. he's pretty good, pretty good at changing songs for his benefit. So he uh, pays. Awesome. You know, people don't know how Weird Al works, which is he. It's uh, you know, he has to go to the artist, say, "Do I have permission to parody your song?" Mm. And when he records a song, he gets no money for his lyrics. All wow. the money, all the all the song royalties go to the original person. Wow! And then he did a song. I know way too much about Weird Al, and that's why I'm here to talk about Weird Al. And <laughs> he did the, a parody of the King song Lola called Yoda, yeah. and he said that was the hardest song he ever had to do because he had to get clearance from the Kings and from George Lucas, and that's then they got that. all the money for that song. He, did, he, got, he gets his performance royalties for being such a great singer. God. But that, that's the that's the business of being weird now. Uh, Damn, he's he's running a charity too, man. He's just running. A, yeah. yeah, seriously, but it's that that's velvet insane. voice that brings in all the just, cash. For him. I'm he sure. Told a funny story. Yeah, he told a funny story where he had to meet with Nirvana. He said, "I want to do a parody of Nirvana," and as cool as you want to think Nirvana is, they were so excited that Weird Al was going to oh, parody that's them. That's adorable. That makes him even cooler. Yeah, and Kurt Cobain <laughs> goes, so what are you going to do? What are you? And he goes, we're changing, <laughs> smells like teen spirit to smells like Nirvana. And they were like, oh, okay. <laughs> Let down. Yeah. We're hoping for something a little better than that. <laughs> um amazing uh, um, love it. okay so i guess so i'm again like this is what we like to do we talk about things and kind of go like yeah there's something in here that we're going to talk about the simpsons um but so i guess going back to the prediction so i think yeah the 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 subreddit itself is simpsons did it so r slash simpson did it for anybody who's listening along but i actually think a good starting point might actually be um there's been a couple articles as of recent we're talking about the biggest hits of this simpsons predicted it world um, I think Time actually did an article about it, which we don't usually use Time as a reference, but I think this is a good reference point. Um, and I think it's, we should just go through some of these and talk about, like, I don't know if you were in the writer's room for it or um, why they 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 happened the way they did and kind of maybe some of your process about how you even struck gold on these. Because I think some of them, like, we talk about, like, Trump. I know there's, like, one reference to, like, Lisa mentioning Trump as she's kind of becoming president. Which I think is I've always it's always interesting when people talk about Trump becoming president as a like they they predicted it was going to happen because it was used as this like sarcastic dystopian future for a yeah. lot of places. And then mm -hmm. it happened. And I think that there is I think for you, it must be a very interesting experience having watched that happen, being like, damn, this was not meant to be a documentary. We did it not was meant to do it joke. this way. Right? Yeah. It yeah. was a joke. And the amazing thing is, A, people have to know, because everyone shows the wrong clip right. to show Simpsons predicting it. It was just two seconds in an episode set in the future where I think right. Marge says, wow, President Trump really wrecked the economy. Right. And this was such a throwaway joke that nobody remembers who thought of it. Nobody, you know, This right. is something that somebody would love to brag about it. Nobody remembers who thought of it. I know. I found out later it wasn't the original joke, even. It was President Depp. It was going to be 
Johnny Depp. And just think, uh, you know, Johnny right. Depp could have been president. We said he was that. close. He, yeah. So it was Depp and nobody laughed. And I think Depp was hard to hear. So they it was a very last minute idea to change it to Trump. And it's a joke. And everyone will say, oh, it sounds crazy. But, you know, he had already announced back in the year 2000, I'm thinking of running for right. president. So it didn't come out of nowhere either. We didn't. Totally. Right. So that's uh, this is this is part of what's wrong with an interview like this is I'll just take the wind out of everybody's cherished belief with a long. <laughs> well, you do though, man. So, but like travel, yeah. So, so like, talk about the northern lights and then predictions. You're just right. like taking the wind out of them, taking the wind that's out of it. them. That's it. I am Mister <laughs> Balloon Prick. They call <laughs> <laughs> Balloon Prick. But so that episode was according to this, according to time, it was. Yeah. Uh, season 11, episode 17, Bart to the Future, right? So um, this reads, yeah, so this was, as you know, we've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is very funny. But I, but I think that, that I think speaks to the writing process a little bit where it's like, you know, he was running for president in 2000, right? Like, I, you know, an analog now would be like Kanye West or something, right? If Kanye West, if, you know, if you did an episode about, you know, in the year 2040 and you mentioned Kanye West's presidency, Right. Like he already tried to do it. It's like not that crazy that he would do it again. Right. Right. There's a, if I could jump into the history of this, too, is uh, on Rowan and Martin's laughing, which is let's, let's call it the Simpsons of its day. It was sort of political comedy. It moved really fast. It was silly. It was smart. But on Rowan and Martin's laughing, they would do news of the future. And one of the jokes was the guy just came out in Washington today. President Ronald Reagan said, and that was it. That was the whole, he didn't even finish the joke. The joke was Ronald Reagan was president. So <laughs> it's been done and right. it can, that, you know, that can happen. And, you know, if you get it wrong, nobody remembers. Right. 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 But the right. second, it, that's kind of like our other favorite uh, mystic predictor, which we've got two. <laughs> you, <laughs> the yeah. Simpsons. Mike. Mike Reese and Baba yes. Vanga. And Baba Vanga. <laughs> Baba yeah. Vanga is, just to give you a quick little rundown and anybody else who's new and listening, Baba Vanga is a Bulgarian mystic. From and she was in the writer's room, I think. <laughs> I think she was in the Simpsons writer room, writer's room, too. She was a blind mystic who predicted quite a few things, including 9-11 and Barack Obama wow. uh, mm. being the first black president. But I'm thinking she had a bunch of incorrect ones, too, that we just don't think about. Yeah, but, people just don't talk about the ones that yeah. she got totally wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those aren't fun to talk about. It's really fun to talk about the ones that you get right. Yeah. The other thing with, with a joke is very often to make a joke, you take something that's real and you go one step beyond it to make it look yeah. silly. And so this is an amazing one. This is no, nobody knows this. The very first commercial parody on SNL, when the show began, the very the first commercial they ever had was for a three-bladed razor. And it was like, because at the time, two-bladed razors had just been invented, and they're going, this is so stupid. Imagine there were three blades. And you could see that ad now, their fake ad, and go... You not even know it, it was a parody. You know, now we're right. Like right. Now we're like six seven blades. blades. <laughs> oh, yeah. So this kind of thing happened. I can and only I imagine one, there'll be ten blades. Yeah. yeah. I did one <laughs> in 1981. I was writing for National Lampoon magazine, right, right. and this was a joke. I got twenty five dollars for it. I go, Warner Brothers has just announced production of Lost in Space, the movie, and it was like. And you're, I'm sure you're going, where's the joke? And there was a Lost in Space, the movie, uh, you know, like five years after that. But at the time, it seemed like the stupidest idea in the world. You know? <laughs> Are you going to turn this cheesy old TV show into a film? <laughs> I love that. So, I mean, it, like I mean, what I'm trying to say, I guess The Simpsons is higher profile. We've been around longer and told more jokes, but... This kind of thing does happen all the time. I, I love mean, it's it. It's like somebody saying, you know, like saying there's going to be a Fast and the Furious 12. Right, you know, exactly. Came out, right, and now we're at like, what, nine or something? So, right. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it totally makes sense. So this is actually, so I think that that's one side of it where you kind of take, 
take a little bit of the the like Trump ran for president. He's a ridiculous person. It, you know, kind of you know one plus one equals two. You right, but like this one, I I saw that I was just like, wow, that is actually fa a fascinating bit, right? And I think that this actually speaks to the intelligence of the writers. But so the Nobel Prize. So this is in season twenty two, episode one, right? Uh, predicted in two thousand ten. So this was you guys predicting the Nobel Prize winner. Yeah. Or Millhouse predicting it. So this was, you know, Ber Bert Holmstrom uh, haven't won, didn't win the Nobel Prize in economics until 2016. But uh, Millhouse no put him knows. on the put him on the Nobel Prize <laughs> betting pool, which in itself is hilarious, by the way. Right. Um, so where where did this one come from? If yeah, you can speak to it, I don't, I you don't have to speak to every single one of them. But I, this is I, I was there for it. And. When I like it's ten years ago, so it was before Simpsons yeah. predicted it. But it was just, right. it was in a script, and it was just this funny idea. I feel like it was the bullies were running a betting pool on the Nobel Prize, and that was right. that was the joke. It's a pretty funny idea. Yeah. And then we said, and then it was. I'm going to say it was Tim Long. It was one of our writers saying, "Well, let's let's try and handicap this. Let's try and find out." who's going to win the Nobel prize in I think economics. I don't remember any of the details, but he, <laughs> he made some calls and he did some research to see who the front runners were to win the Nobel prize in economics. Right. And this was the name that kept popping up. So he put it in the show. So that's one time. Yeah, we literally did. And I think it's the only time we literally tried to predict something and it just involved you know, five minutes on the internet to, to right. figure it out. Seeing who's, That's yeah, who are the area. favorites? Yeah. yeah. And, but this is, I mean, I guess what I find so compelling about that though is like, you know, I, I always, I always talk to my girlfriend about with, with King of the Hill this way, right? Where I like love King of the Hill. Cause I think yeah. it's just like, I, I think Mike Judge is just a genius and, and she just thinks it's like the dumbest show in the world. And I'm kind of like, well, yeah, but no. Right. And <laughs> I think that it's kind of like, where I think Simpsons can be, very stupid and like extremely intelligent simultaneously and they don't they don't uh cancel each other out i feel like they coexist really comfortably i think that's and the so, sweet spot yeah like, that is the sweet spot i mean i think yeah. that the fact that you can work in this joke about the nobel peace prize in economics and get it right right mm -hmm. while also you know having like i was i was watching i, I was uh my, my friends i mean this is actually the only time that i've really watched it like very focused is my friends for Halloween. They, they love watching the Treehouse of horror series. So we just kind of like go through them, mm -hmm. which are amazing. I know you've written, you were, you're credited with writing a couple of them. And so I was watching, I think three last night and it was a joke where it was just like, it was when, when the King Kong, like the Homer King Kong and somebody from the crowd goes, look at the size of that platform. <laughs> <laughs> So stupid and so funny, and but it's like that is so dumb. But the Nobel Prize, like they they coexist in this world of humor that I just find so compelling as like a writing strategy, where like you don't have to write it dumb if you're using smart references, you yeah. know, and like like you can make a fart joke, but in a in a way that is it still alludes to this hyper intelligent understanding of the context of the fart joke that makes it feel smart and dumb at the same time which is I just love fascinating that. So. i love hyper intelligence of the fart joke yeah oh. and it is you know when we were again making the show that first summer it was a summer job nobody i've, I've told the story way too often that we made 13 over a summer and i was sitting in the writer's room before it came on and i said how long do you think this show is going to go on? And everybody had the same answer. We all said six weeks. So not only did right. we not think it would succeed, we didn't even think we get to show all 13 we made. So that's wow. a bad prediction. But yep. those were the days when if you tried to do something different on TV, you'd get canceled after six weeks. Right. So right. that was all. And so as a result slip, yeah. of that, we just said, well, nobody's watching this. Let's just do whatever we want. And that would involve, right. okay, we haven't heard a fart joke on TV. Now's the time we'll do a fart joke. And nobody's made a joke about Omu and Type E, you know, these Herman Melville novellas. Let's do that too. Let's just get a bunch of crap on TV that we never saw before and we'll never see again.
You make a good joke in your book. Um, you say, I think like the most uh, controversial and racy show on the air at the time was Golden Girls. Golden which, Girls. <laughs> the most fast-paced so, <laughs> and reverent show on TV. Yes. <laughs> and I was laughing. Three uh, corpses and a mummy. <laughs> <laughs> and then The Simpsons was came out and you're kind of going like, yeah, the, at the time that the shows that were out were not you know, we're not what we think of TV today at all. And that's it. So, you know, those of you whose parents wouldn't let you watch it, it's very reasonable. And people would ask me, how old, when can I let my kids watch The Simpsons? And I would always go, I don't know, 12. I don't have kids, but I thought 12 is a good age. And now, you know, you're watching it with your four-year-old. and But I probably shouldn't be. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, So what? One of so my good, dog. I pulled up another one, by the way. Yeah, this one is like the most insane prediction, in my opinion, because I feel like you can't. This one's fucking. This nuts. one's just like you can't get this wrong because, <laughs> according to one of the physicists who like looked at what the so let me throw up what the actual the equation. The yeah. 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 So let me share a different tab real quick because apparently a a physicist named. Simon Singh, who Simon is also Singh. the author of The Simpsons and Their Mathematical Secrets. Which is also fucking nuts that there's I, a book yeah. about The Simpsons and Mathematical Secrets. <laughs> so he actually looks, apparently, this equation that Homer is working through um, is if you work it out, you get the mass of a Higgs boson that's only a bit larger than the la- the nano mass of a Higgs of what a Higgs boson actually is. So the Higgs boson is an elementary particle that helps explain why other particles in the universe have mass. So this is something that in it was done in 1998, right. and the Higgs boson is something that was discovered in 2013 after like 13 billion dollars were funneled into an experiment. <laughs> And like someone's looking back and it's like, we could have just probably skipped that part and <laughs> looked at the <laughs> what Homer was writing down in this. And look episode. at the donut transition there. It's all in the donut. See? Yeah. It's yeah. all in the donut. Like and that, you know, there's a great story that goes with the other equation <laughs> he's got there too. And, well, and again, it's not so much that we're predictive or anything and we're right. psychics, but we work really hard. And yeah, you know, totally. we I think for the Whenever we had something like this, we'd go to David Cohen. David Cohen's the creator of Futurama. David Cohen yep. was a scientist before he was a cart- before he's writing fart jokes. <laughs> he's a he's a very brilliant scientist. So he said, "David, give us something to put on the blackboard." And you know, up until in the old days of TV, you just fake it. Or, you know, x yeah. equals x equals a fish or something like that. Nobody cared. He said, "Give us something good here." So we did. We said, figure out the be- your best guesstimate for the Higgs boson mass. Mm. And so it is real science from a real scientist. And every I think everybody's in on – everyone loves to play the game where they go, and Simpsons predicted it, and scientists are going, it's right. remarkable. I think we were off – by 10 million percent. I think it's, <laughs> it's literally the Higgs boson was 100,000 times smaller than we predicted. It's some ridiculous Damn. number like that. So we weren't really that close. But I think in science terms, 10 million percent is close enough. Right. You know, with quantum numbers and that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah, I mean, and, and also yeah. just no other show w- is making the kind of effort that would be required to try to extend a joke that way. I mean, I think that's kind of, again, that's what makes it so interesting is like uh, anywhere else where they're doing that, you just said it where like they put an equation on the board and they just go, Oh, this is, this is just like cat plus dog equals fish. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you guys go, well, that's not funny. That's not interesting. We're going to actually do the thing. Right. And then end it with a donut. Right. But ultimately, using this thing, I mean, I also think about the writing on like Arrested Development. I've always like been so compelled by that show is like you watch and every joke is a compounding joke from six episodes before and then three seasons before. And then you just you can't stop watching it because it just is like 
so well written and and so i think seeing that kind of thing in in comedy i think is really special because it's you know you you do see like you know true detective or something like that in the first season of true detective you're like wow i can't believe they've stitched all these whatever it's so well written but we think of well written in drama as a as like poetry right it's about like the the dialogue and the relationship of the characters but i think well written in comedy is like a different metric entirely it's like a it, it <clears throat> is an intelligence of the way that something connects to other pieces there you go we to, have our yeah. dog there yeah, we go. Mine. <laughs> that, it's right this on is, cue Doug Bob. this is basically the today show over here <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> pretty much but yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, that's what's so interesting about it yeah it's i think what, what makes it yeah oh sorry i was just gonna add, like glom onto that but yeah. sort of this adding like a specificity and a detail to a joke makes the joke better and i think that's something you said you guys work really hard you sort of you know, you you know that, and so you go that extra mile, that extra step to find the the most specific, most obscure detail, which I think the real nerds of the show go, yes, like that's what we love about this show is the detail, the specificity. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. what's really funny right. and makes it different than other jokes that might be similar because that's always well, the really speed, hard is is yeah. all it comes down to, and it, it, the Simpsons can be credited with anything. Uh, I just remember I worked for 10 years in TV before I went to The Simpsons, and we always worked long hours, but you never worked that hard. You never cared about every joke, and you never cared about researching and getting your details exactly right. Nobody cared about that stuff till us, and that's something we brought to it. And it brings me to uh, Arrested Development, which is, you know, they used to write that show two doors down, you know, and it's two buildings away from us doing The Simpsons. And those people worked harder. They worked as hard as human beings are physically capable of working, which is they, you know, they work 20 hours a day and they work seven days a week. And uh, that was it. They worked to exhaustion and there was one day my wife and I, it was like three in the morning on a Sunday and I go, I'm hungry. And she, she says, nothing's open. And I go, arrested development is going to be open. So we, we, <laughs> we go, I said, I know they're going to be working. It's only three in the morning on a Sunday. And I go in and there they are in the middle of work day. And I, you know, I just said, I'm just hey, here to get some, uh, some cinnamon peanuts and <laughs> then I go to their snack room and got some food. So, the work shows the work yeah. shows, and you can't fake that no that's so and true I, wonder, I mean i wonder wait because i think i i find that when i'm when i'm writing in those kind of like you know half lucid kind of hyper manic states of writing i i, I don't find myself as productive i, I like yeah. second guess every single thing i do and i can't you know i can't get past like this one like tiny minutia and I, I kind of at a certain point i'm just banging my head against the wall but it sounds like with you guys and I think even something like rest development, it's, it's a matter it, 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 what, what about that kind of work process makes it effective versus it, versus it be, being destructive? It's well, it can be both. And as I say, there, right. there are people who are called perfectionists and they're just churning. They're just going okay. through it and second guessing and third guessing, and they have something good and then they throw it out. And, I hate that kind of job and I've had those kind of jobs too, but it's just sort of working productively and, you know, always moving forward. And, you know, the show I've been watching a lot. I'm so late to the game. I've been watching Rick and Morty and I I said, well, I know how to make cartoons and I don't know how they do this. I can, (laughs) I can see the levels of hard work and every episode I think, you know, if I were working on that story, I'd go, well, I've got it, and that's it, and let's do the show. And they always go three twists beyond that and make Damn. it so much better. And the the only thing I can see, and this is why we live in an age of better TV now, is you don't have to make as many. You only make as many or as, as are good. You know, mm-hmm. it used to be just given when I started in TV. You got to make 22 of these. And even James L. Brooks, you know, with such a stellar reputation, he says, you do a couple of good ones, a couple of bad ones, and everything else in between. But 
now, you know, if a network will say you only have to make 10 episodes in two years, like Rick and Morty, they go, all right, we'll make every single one a classic. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, and I think, yeah, I'm pulling Don back on. He fell off for a second. Um, hey. yeah, I, think, I mean, Rick and Morty's a, a really <laughs> interesting one, too, because Rick and Morty feels like it, 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 they are, they go just like, uh, they fly in the face of logic in almost every possible instance, right? Mm -hmm. Which I think is kind of the premise of the show, of course. But, but I think that it's really interesting in in terms of writing because every time I watch it, I definitely feel like I have. I, you cannot predict where it's going to go. And with Simpsons, it's like there's a little bit of a linear pathway where it's not about predicting where it can go, but you kind of like, you know, you know where like you know where B is going to be, and you're just watching A get to B, right? Yeah. With I think Rick and Morty, it feels like they 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 say, "Hey, we're starting here," and then they don't tell you where it's going to go, and they just let it happen, right? Right. And and I think that that's a really fascinating way of doing it. And I think you know, I mean, this is you know, Free Day. We've never really talked about your experience. I think in writing this capacity. So so Free Day wrote the show called Workaholics. Workaholics. Yeah. You have yeah, that. I, I'm a I'm a co-creator of the show. Yeah. So I. What? I I designed it. Um, we we wrote it as a web series for YouTube, yeah. way back in 2006 or seven, I think. And then that was our sort of, you know, pitch material that we pitched to Comedy Central, who bought it. And then all of a sudden, we were making a show, and I didn't really know how to write scripts. You know, it was like one of those situations, and so I had to retroactively figure out how to make a TV show. And um, and then it went on for seven seasons. It's actually coming back. Um, oh, wow. Same guys on Paramount Plus this year. This is not a plug for Paramount Plus, but damn, they're kind of, they're kind of relaunching their um, their own. I think Viacom owns Comedy Central, which owns the show. So it's all that it's, show is so great. It's so oh, great, yeah. and yeah. <laughs> and I, I kind of got mad in that I don't think it was the, most of what you hear on TV that's supposed to be great. I think it's terrible. I don't like them at all. I'm talking. Mad Men. I think that's a piece of crap. <laughs> Me and then, too. And then I stumble on something like Workaholics, which I kind of knew was out there, and I see a billboard. I go, every episode is friggin' great. It's so funny, and these guys are so lovable and terrific. Yeah, I love that show. Awesome. So, oh, awesome. Show. Cool. Yeah. How can you bury a lead like that? That show. <laughs> I know. It seems like we buried the lead for like six years because a yeah, few of our listeners are like, "What?" Yeah, we've we, never really uh, talked really talk about that. I, I get yeah, we don't talk about that. anonymous, I, I, only I, anonymous I, I, internet users. That's, that's what we're known for on this on this podcast. <laughs> you weren't were listed in the credits as my free day. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, I have a first and last name. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, it was. I mean, for for us, that was like I went to a shitty college. Uh -huh. There's two colleges in the TV world, that, and and I wanted to bring this up to you. There's uh, Harvard, yeah. and you the Harvard work for the Lampoon, or, yeah. or there's Arizona State, which is what Harvard makes fun of, which is where <laughs> I went to school. So that's the Harvard of the Southwest. Well, I feel like you can go one of two directions in education: the best or the worst. And so. I chose, <laughs> I was a late bloomer and I went the other way, but all of, you know, that show for me was coming out of college, essentially extremely unprepared for mm -hmm. the, the professional world. And then a lot of my friends were in that same boat. It's like, well, what do you do now? You get a shitty sales job. Well, what's that like? This is fucking miserable. Oh my God. <laughs> this is the, the polar opposite of what we were doing last summer uh, at pools in Arizona is now we're in an office wearing shitty suits trying to sell some crap to people that don't want to buy it. So like, and so what do we do to get through the day? We smoke weed. We drink too much. Maybe we drop acid at work, whatever. Um, you know, that's kind of the DNA or the nucleus of where that show comes out of struggling to kind of like figure out your twenties when you're extremely unprepared coming out of a college, like my alma mater, which by the way, is a pretty good school. The research facilities are, are second to none. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure we're all familiar with Grady Gamage Auditorium, and that's right. But the Simpsons uh, right. famously made fun of uh, Arizona State a handful of times, and everybody does. But um, uh, well, we felt, also do on I this felt, podcast, and so fair. do we, and, and so yeah. do I. Yeah, but it, I, yes, I, it is a nice school. I I lived like uh, <laughs> five minutes away from that for many years, and my brother went to school oh. there. 
So, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. You know, oh, it's cool. a college. It's a, it's, it's a college. It's, and we're, <laughs> You know, I'm, if, if you Google Mike Reese, you Google my name, the first thing that comes up is hates Harvard. So, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I went to supposedly a good school, and I wish I wish a massive sinkhole would swallow that horrible place up. <laughs> I would I would pick Love it to it. swallow Harvard and then Mar-a-Lago in that order. Uh, <laughs> Harvard, Mar-a-Lago, and then the entire country of Spain. I think is what we've gotten out of this. So. <laughs> that's, that's Mar-a-Lago is is on. Um, it could be swallowed by a sinkhole just from where it is in yeah, Florida, right? I mean, sinkhole country. I'm a bit of a geologist on the side, you know. <laughs> I think I think if you write that into an episode right now, I think it means it's going to come true in like twenty twenty eight. So I think you know, if you, yeah, that, if you wish it, Mike, I think it comes true. I think that's what we've gotten out of this whole episode. So if you want Mar a Lago to not exist, or if you want Harvard to not exist, you just got to write it into a Simpsons episode. Oh, yeah. please, 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 please. It'll happen. Uh, <laughs> this is like the mean thing of uh, like steamed ham. That kind of it was like Bill Oakley turns in a script whatever 27 years ago and it's got it's 22 short films about springfield and one of them had the steam cams run in it <laughs> and i remember reading it and i told bill gee that's the funniest thing i ever read and then nothing happens nothing <laughs> happens for 20 years and then suddenly it's all over the internet it's memed to death steamed hands and bill oakley you know suddenly i <laughs> steamed hams and i'll Come to your town and steam a ham, and it's so ridiculous. Carson, Carson Daly's comment, calling him for comment. He's like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's amazing. That's insane. Um, all right. Well, well, we're uh, we're right. closing in on the the kind of end of this soon. I know we're okay. we're kind of uh, at eight eight forty five. So. Um, I think I would actually love to know a little bit, Mike, what, what you're like of, you know, kind of getting to the, the prediction theme still, I know that we yeah. have wandered away from it m many times, but what, what would you say of your experience writing on the show and kind of being associated with the show for so long? What was, what was one that you were like, damn, I could never have expected this. Like what, it, what like a prediction that you just like, holy shit. It just happened. It just happened. Cause I mean, for years I just go, I get it. This is dumb these things happen all of that right and then kamala harris is uh whatever is uh inaugurated as vp right. and she's wearing exactly the same outfit lisa moore <laughs> is president i mean it's, um, I I that, that was too. That's something actually where insane. i go what the how did that happen and you know there's no explanation for it unless you know subliminally you know kamala's right. dresser was a Simpsons fan? I can't believe it, and that's it. I, you know, that's the I can only find one out. I, I don't have an explanation for it, and I, I saw that. And I go, oh, maybe all these guys are right. Yeah, maybe we do stuff. predict stuff. Here. I will. Um, I mean, this is insane. It was absolutely insane. I saw this, and I was just like, wow, our nation. Like this is unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, my my wife works in uh, styling, and 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 worked with some people that worked in this in, at this inauguration. So I'm gonna go dig up an answer about that. And I'm going to email it to you guys after this. Okay. We'll get to the bottom of this thing because that's too crazy. Yeah I, yeah. I also think that there's, I mean, this is kind of our, uh, our putting on our conspiracy hats here. But I, I think yeah. that the the people who work in, I think the people who work in political um, advisory roles are either, are, are both, and sometimes they're one or the other, are like extremely dumb. Like, I can't believe how dumb they are. But also... <laughs> There's some people that I'm just like, man, you are thinking many steps ahead. So I always wonder this about the political <laughs> roles of these people, about whether or not they have digital literacy and an understanding that, you know, if you make Kamala dress like this Simpsons character from uh -huh. this one episode, people are going to make a thing about it on the Internet. It's what happens and it's going to increase relevancy of her as a likable character. So we suggest doing it this way. Because it just seems like I'm just like I can't believe like it doesn't make sense that this would have happened like that she'd be dressed exactly like this for an episode where Lisa is being a uh, was was Lisa the president was she in she was the president yeah. that's, cra was, that does, that's crazy yeah it was all working backwards too from uh, a pretty shaky idea that just Bart said we said what will Bart be like and 
as an adult. And it's like, yeah. he'd be like the brother of a president, like Roger Clinton right. or Billy yeah. Carter. And, right. you know, Obama, Obama's got a, a sort of a bum brother too, right? Yeah, they all have bum <laughs> brother, And that was going to be the whole comic premise is Bart is the right. bum brother of a president. Yeah. And, and in fact, you know, Perfect. this episode, which is so cited now, Simpsons predicted it, blah, blah, blah. The, at the time it came out, USA Today ranked it as the worst Simpsons of all time. Oh, and, uh, amazing. That was it. They, they ranked, I think it was when we did our 300th episode, they ranked them 1 to 300, mm. which, you know, <laughs> is idiotic anyhow. Yeah, but they did it, and there it was. That was number 300. And so year, years later, I'm on Twitter, and I'm making some joke about Simpsons predicted it, and and a guy writes in, I'm, I'm the USA Today writer. I covered it. And I said, yes, you're the one who said it was the worst episode ever. Uh, <laughs> I remember you. We remember like stuff. Me. I remember yeah. stuff. I have, uh, I have kind of like another one more, maybe towards the end, broad kind of question to propose. But okay. you know, it, I feel like, I, I, and you tell me, like in the 90s, did we take ourselves more seriously as 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 a country mm -hmm. and, and in our culture? And things seem so off the rails now where everyone's like, like there's no rules anymore. Like the shamelessness is just uh, everyone's tick tock and with their shirt off 24 yeah. seven. Like, I feel like in the nineties, people at least held themselves with in, in a higher esteem, like publicly, like there was a little more like, I wouldn't say class, but like, um, like people seem to care more about how they were perceived publicly or something. But like, what did that, give you guys a, a better um, platform to make fun of. And now is it harder to make fun of people because they're so shameless? Like have, have the dynamics changed a little bit and in, in sort of ridiculing or satirizing because the culture seems to have shifted so hard and, but, yeah, or, or am I just getting old? You know, I no, don't know. No, no. You're, you're right. I mean, when you talk about the, you know, watch the first season of the Simpsons, I mean, don't watch it because it's not that great, but if you watch it and go, this is what scandalized the nation. This was yeah. shocking. We were condemned by the National Council of Churches. <laughs> and President George Bush Sr. Yeah, right. came out and criticized the show. And you watch it, and it's it's not only tame, it's kind of boring. But that that's what it used to take to, to shock everybody. It didn't take much. Wow. And there, there's something. If anyone ever wanted to give Donald Trump credit, you know, there's some things you give him credit for, which is there used to be a million unwritten rules and they didn't matter. And none right. of us, everyone thought, well, you know, yeah, if you're going to go into a presidential debate, you're going to have to at least do a little research or behave yourself. No, it didn't matter. And, <laughs> and Trump, you know, he lost every debate he was ever in. He wasn't even trying and it, it didn't matter. And you go, mm -hmm. oh, wow, well, there's a good lesson. Presidential debates don't matter. Right. There was a yeah. guy, just to give one more historical fact, there was a guy named Howard Dean. And I don't yeah, know Howard Dean. Dean. Howard so Dean, they were going, he's going to be the next Democratic nominee, next president. And he lost the New Hampshire primary. And he came out and he, that night, he goes, well, we're going to win Connecticut. Woo! And we're going to win Arizona. <laughs> Woo! And we're going to win. And Everyone goes, and that's what killed his career. He said woo, and he said woo right. too much. And it was like, now we know from Trump, you know, Trump would do a woo a day. He would do something like that. <laughs> yeah. it had nothing to do with anything. And it was just no. sort of people's minds were made up about Howard Dean, and they didn't like him. And it was sort of just the media going, oh, he shouldn't have said woo so much. <laughs> so, that's so true. Oh, so, man. That's it. So that is the answer. Yes, the world, you know, it's Trump has woken us up to anything goes. There are no rules. And we sort of, and I'm going to get too philosophical for a second. Please. So much of our modern society is based on people just going, hey, unwritten rules, nobody wrote them. So an example of that is Uber. You know, everyone just used to think, well, you can only get in a taxi. You're not going to get in a car with a stranger. A guy who's just a guy can't be a taxi. And Uber said, why? Where is Aaron? So suddenly Uber and, you know, Airbnb. Uh, there's either a hotel or someone's house. And someone says, eh, why can't a house be a hotel? So yeah. that's the world yeah. we live in now. 
that's a good way to get rich right now is just to figure out what is something we're all taking for granted that's just totally. not really a rule. Yeah. Well, as, the, as the world changes, we, we will always have the Simpsons, hopefully, to keep well, us to it. keep us tethered. The, yeah. the, you know, the Simpsons is always as good as the world is bad. Yes. So, oh, that's a fact. I mean, that's a that's a brilliant takeaway, honestly. I mean, that that is, and you know, it's it's interesting because the world continues getting worse. I think in a lot of ways. Um, so, which is I just think, great know, news for the Simpsons. Yeah, and I think you guys have. I mean, you guys have been going for thirty three seasons now, or something. So it's so I think that the fact that you got renewed for thirty four and thirty five. I mean, I don't know if that's worthy of celebration or if you guys are like, yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, but. You know, which, it's continuing yeah. to get renewed. So nobody's going to cancel. Which executive is going to be like, you know what? I have a big idea. Let's cancel the Simpsons. Like it, it's going to be a hard <laughs> yeah. call to make. That's, a, that's an emboldened, a very, very emboldened person at that point. So yeah, um, I know. I hope it goes this, forever. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully. Yeah. So this is another one, by the way, I think it's probably maybe one of the last ones we can do. Um, I find this image absolutely insane. So if anybody's not on, if you're just listening to this podcast, this is an image of the UK, um, the UK, uh, I guess the Brexit vote. And it is like almost to the pixel of the photo of, of Homer and the Moo Moo. Right. <laughs> my favorite what episode, I think. The world. Yeah, this is like uh, insane. I love it. The shape of England is the shape of Homer and a Moo Moo. Like right. the colors. colors they chose are the colors of the Moo Moo. Like it's just, it's beautiful. It makes me wonder if the person who chose the colors was like, you know what the shape kind of reminds me of. I mean, it could be a troll, right? Like it, it could, could be, be. A, it could be a troll, but it, it definitely feels like this is another one of those that I'm just like, this has nothing to do with the intelligence of the writing. <laughs> this is entirely to do with like the cause forces behind the simpsons for whatever reason spirit of baba like, vanga stars. yeah I know. I mean, and who who figured that out it certainly <laughs> wasn't totally. us. we're, we're gonna dress homer in a moo moo that looks like a future brexit map of it. <laughs> yeah. who, who who saw that brexit map go hey this looks like homer you know <laughs> it's a bigger fan than me notice that <laughs> are there right. are there anybody was there anybody on the staff that just claims uh that they predicted all this stuff that's extremely egotistical about the claims. Like, oh yeah, I definitely made that on purpose. <laughs> I kind of like can, that approach. This is your opportunity to throw that groaning under the bus, by the way. We're, we're, <laughs> we're happy to, to tarnish his name. Yeah, if I can tell a real quick story, it's uh, the a great thing that keeps everyone humble at The Simpsons is the idea that the show would be exactly as good without you. Even, even you know, I've given uh, half my life to the show and I worked so hard for at least a few years there. But if I'd never been born, the show would be exactly the same. So everyone's pretty humble, except this one guy who worked at the show. Nobody liked this guy. And one day he came in, we said he'd been gone for a week on vacation and it was a vacation for us. He wasn't there. <laughs> And we said, how was your vacation? He said, well, you know, people heard I worked on The Simpsons and they were going to be funny, do something funny. And I said, I make America laugh 360 days a year. Can't I have five days to myself? Uh, <laughs> oh my Are you fucking shitting me? Hey, you've never made anybody Dude. laugh. We've never gotten a joke in the show. So the only contribution this guy ever made to the show is we took that line and we had Krusty say it. Uh, <laughs> that's the best yeah, Krusty like, line of all time. Yeah. That's the insult, too. <laughs> Krusty say it. He's just I mean, drinking that bottle yeah. of triple X liquor. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, such, a, it's such an interesting i mean i i uh i hope the show goes on forever i'm gonna start doing the i've been doing this with the wire where i'm just like shit man I, I i just have to watch the wire i'm such an idiot i can't believe i didn't watch it so now i'm like gonna do the exact same thing with the simpsons and probably i mean knowing how i am i'm probably just gonna watch three house of horror over and over again and just like call that my simpsons experience i like that kind of stuff but um but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna start going through maybe i'll start with that 300 list i'll start with the 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 quote-unquote worst simpsons episode yeah, ever your way up. tick away tick away over and over again just like it's, it's so great older. when when you have kids you get disney plus 
one of just one of the greatest things about Disney Plus as a parent is you go, oh sweet, the Simpsons are here. All of the Simpsons are here, a hundred percent of them. It's the it's the best gift. So I'm excited what? to watch them all with my kids. Oh, now cool. um, yeah. it's the all right. Well, if do we have any other closing remarks for Mike? Do we have any other questions or or thoughts? I just uh, to pump for tomorrow's <laughs> episode of. <sighs> Mike's what podcast. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? Know, am I doing here? Um, the, the tomorrow, which this will probably be out by then, but tomorrow you said was uh, Iceland, right? I think it's Iceland and the Sudan. It just shows you what you get on the show. Iceland, <laughs> and I immediately go to an African country nobody's ever visited. And if you're oh, if you're a Simpsons oh, wonk, uh, the book I've been listening to it. Mike reads it. It's super funny, and you get a million great stories about everything so i totally recommend that too springfield confidential springfield confidential yes confidential. check out his twitter too mike reese writer oh, yeah. um right. so many awesome just like little tidbits all the time and um yeah i mean just thanks for thanks for joining us like three oh, people gosh, in no. the house with dogs barking this really fun i'm so glad i didn't have to talk about reddit at all uh, no way <laughs> It's like, and then I looked at it, I go, Jesus, like, this is the ugliest website. <laughs> very chaotic website. What it's a very chaotic website. Was this designed by the Soviets in the 50s? It is. I love I love that our fans too. I mean, we're gonna have we're gonna you're getting new Simpsons watchers. I know you guys were really really scraping the barrel on audience. You guys, really needed, watchers. you guys really needed new Simpsons audience. So well, that's uh, that's what you're gonna get out of this. So, um, and we'll have to we'll have to have you on again when we do our uh, coveted North Korea episode because I know you've okay. been to North Korea. Yes. So, thank me, guys. This was really fun. So oh, awesome. thank you so thank much, you much Mike. Mike. Well, thank it you so amazing. much. Well, all right, th thank you all for listening. This is Did You Reddit, a weekly podcast about the internet by way of right at the front page of the internet. My name is It's Your Dad. I'm Dog Boobs. My free day. And Mike Reese. <laughs> Mike Reese of Simpsons fame, the longest running Simpsons writer, EP creator. Are you considered a creator on the show or is that just Matt alone? It's, uh, Matt Groening gets the credit. He'll introduce me as the creator. Which is wow. which is very generous of him, and love you know, it. just, just, just throwing you your own. Just I do like, live oh, in yeah, three like houses, and I live yeah. in an apartment. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a nice apartment in Manhattan, though I'm sure. So. Love it. Um, and you know what? We're gonna credit Weird Al Yankovic for being on this too show. Or, <laughs> yeah, you know, he wasn't here. We and your doorman. Yeah, my yeah, door. the doorman. Trevor the Morris, Al. the funny doorman. Love and the it. funny Amazing. doorman. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you all for listening. See you later. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Bye. Bye.